Here's my problem. You know, they say we want a global government because there's global problems and, you know, all, all this environmental stuff. Well, all they care about is the carbon, carbon dioxide that plants respirate from, the life cycle. They don't care about genetic engineering. They don't care about toxic waste dumping or overfishing or cutting down old growth forest or cross species. All these things that we know are dangerous and they don't care about the 400 plus nuclear reactors. Our own energy department estimates 92% are leaking. You can pull those numbers up, just type in 90 plus percent of reactors leaking. Now when the alarms go off, they just decommission the alarms. Last year with Fukushima, the FDA, the EPA first and then FDA agreed. The EPA said, we're going to raise the level of different isotopes hundreds of times, thousands of times for some isotopes as it came over. Okay, so things have really changed. They have the troops using DU. And you've got reactors leaking all over, 30, 40 years old, rotting. They're not going to the newer, cleaner systems. Now I see all these leading environmentalists like George Mombiot endorsing nuclear power. And I'm sorry, folks. You know, I'm what you call a libertarian constitutionalist. Back when I was more ignorant 15 years ago, I was all about nuclear power. But now they're rotting, falling apart, and the corporations don't care. They're crazy. And within a few weeks of power going on around the country, the diesel will run out. We've got an experimental reactor right here in Austin. Shout to me, a big power reactor. So I live in the fallout zone of two of these. And I don't like it. And now they want to build more of them and run them shoddily. And so joining us as a leading expert on this, Nuclear Roulette. We sell the book at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, forward by Jerry Mander and Ernst uh, Kallenbach. And I have finally read the book. I wanted to get this guy on months ago. It came highly recommended by some of the physicists and people we've had on, Dr. Busby and others. Uh, Nuclear Roulette, the truth about the most dangerous energy source on Earth. Uh, Gar Smith is editor emeritus of Earth Island Journal, a Project Censored Award winner. I'm the winner of that as well. Uh, investigative journalist and co-founder of the Environmentalist Against War. He has uh, covered revolutions in Central America and has uh, engaged in environmental campaigns on three continents. He lives a low-impact, solar-assisted lifestyle in Berkeley, California. People say, well, why do you have a guy on, an environmentalist, when you're talking about the green movement and behind the green mask being the takeover? Because they attach all this real reasonable stuff to something run by Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan that is a tax-based system. And so if we just fight the environmental movement... Number one, it makes us look stupid, and it's not sophisticated. There's a real environmental movement, and there's a clone of it, but, but, but a, a counterfeit. But, but we're not going to get into that so much. I just wanted to throw that out. Uh, that I don't even have to agree with everything somebody stands for. I don't even know what the guy stands for in total. To understand that nuclear power is a ticking time bomb that just keeps going off. And now when they have leaks all the time in Nebraska or up in Canada, it's, not, it's a footnote now. And radiation levels are more than double what they were 60 years ago in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, there it is. AP, radioactive leaks found at 75% of U.S. nuclear power sites. And the Department of Energy estimates 92% worldwide. But again, then that's a whitewash as well. That's Associated Press. Okay, enough of me. Gar, good to get you on. Tell us about your environmental philosophy because we all live on this island Earth. I agree with you, Spaceship Earth. And, and, and where you see this going with the reactors that are just falling apart? Well, thank you for the invite, Alex. It's um, not a good future that we're facing. There's a lot of talk about uh, the fiscal cliff, but uh, uh, anybody who's been living on planet Earth recently realizes that there's something else going on. It's, we're facing a geophysical cliff. The, uh, the weather is changing, and we've got reactors that were built for a different planet. Uh, the, the reactors that uh, are operating today in their old age and their senescence, uh, they should have been retired at the end of their lifestyles, their, their, life, uh, their life design times. But out of a convenience to the industry, which has received convenience after convenience, gift after gift, bailout after bailout, these things are being relicensed and allowed to be uprated, which means that they can operate hotter and harder to generate more power for an industry that's not as efficient or as profitable as it used to be. And these reactors, even the NRC now admits, are more susceptible to earthquake risks than was realized. The medium risk is triple the design. Or flood risk. I mean, they're having to off-gas all the time when there's a moderate flood. That's right. These things are not uh, 
they are not leak proof. They are admittedly designed to uh, to leak tritium, xenon. Uh, there are permissible amounts of uh, 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 radiation that can flow into our waterways, and it's permissible because it can't be controlled. So why not make it permissible? It's the same thing the uh, the Japanese and the American governments did after Fukushima, when the radiation went up in the Tokyo schoolyards. The uh, response from the government was, well, we'll raise the level for exposure for children 20-fold. Same thing happened in the United Wave States. Wave a magic wand. What is generating in its heart? Then we'll get into the technicals because you're the, the expert on this. Why are they so reckless? Where do these nuclear energy CEOs think their kids are going to live and their grandkids if this continues? Well, you know, I, I had a grim insight into the mindset of some of the uh, officials that, that have run this program. I had a friend whose father worked for the Atomic Energy Commission. This is some time ago. This is one of the early guys. And I actually had a chance to ask him this question when I was a student at UC Berkeley. Uh, I asked about the, the, the danger of nuclear power and the problem of disposing of the nuclear wastes. And what he told me was, and he introduced his comment with kind of a, a, a laugh and a smirk, he said, what makes you think human beings are going to be here on this planet in 200 years. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And, and, you know, that's the response I've gotten. That's the response so many other scientists I've interviewed, whether it's GMO, you name it. They just say there's too many people. But it's not even saying too many people from their research to try to make the Earth, you know, you know more... Uh, sustainable even if you believe that argument it's just a nihilistic let the devil have an attitude yeah something i concluded after looking at the response to chernobyl and three mile island and fukushima and more than 50 other significant reactor accidents we've had around the world in the last 50 years is that there is a, a common thread and i've described it as hubris denial and deception this is the response to nuclear risk. You begin with denial. Our technology will never fail, even though you know it leaks. Well, there's a saying within the nuclear engineering community, and it's, it's very brief but very telling. Among themselves, they agree. They, they have this statement. Nuclear energy can be safe. Nuclear energy can be clean, just not at the same time. That's the hubris. Yeah. Now, when the hubris fails and there's an accident, you get into denial. And you saw this at all at Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, and, and uh, Fukushima. Initially, the government says, no problem. Uh, it took uh, almost nine years before uh, the TMI owners admitted that there had been a partial meltdown in the plant. Uh, the um, the um, uh, third phase is, uh, is deception, when it becomes obvious that there is a problem. When people downwind start picking up radiation traces and say, where is this coming from? Uh, then you get into deception. Okay, we have it under control. In Japan, it's look at the radiation monitors, which they took forever to install. Shows there's no problem. Well, Let's stop there's... right there at the third point and do the rest of the interview on the deception. It's all covered in nuclear roulette. I believe this is one of the greatest threats facing humanity is the fact that the nuclear industry is becoming collectively uh, insane and self-destructive. And if they want to kill themselves, that's their business. They're not going to kill me and my family. We'll be right I've seen is most of these reactors are 35 years old. They were supposed to only run 25 to 30 years. And the radiation starts eating them. The heat eats them. They're just falling apart everywhere. And their answer is store the rods there. Oh, you're allowed to off-gas. Radiation's now safe. Just like DU in 1990. They, they'd had it since the 50s. And there were Army reports. I've had the former head of the Army program, um, uh, Dr. Doug Rockion, physicist, uh, who was the head of their DU program, and they just said, we can never use this. But magically, they said, oh, it's safe to use now. And there's this magic wanding where they just say, you know what, isotopes are up all over the U.S. Just raise the level of isotopes of what we say is safe. 25 times, 100 times, 200 times, some isotopes over 1,000 times. Radiation didn't go that high, but why not raise it a billion times? Why not say you could live in the center of the sun and, and wave a magic wand? So, so... 
recapping the three stages with author and researcher uh, Gar Smith, uh, best-selling author of Nuclear uh, Roulette, available at InfoWarsStore.com. Hope you get it and read it, because even if you know about it, there's a lot to learn here and then give it to others. Gar, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. Recap the first two levels. You've got uh, the first two levels, then you were getting into deception, and then go back into deception, how they handle it now when, you know, a few months ago, oh, there's radiation up all over Europe, very dangerous. Oh, yeah, France had a leak, but we're not going to say anything about it. Please continue. Yeah, the government has uh, not been a very reliable source of information, and this this is a general trend, too. One of my favorite quotes is from Dr. Natalia Miranova. She's a nuclear engineer from Russia, and she's one of the survivors of the Chernobyl cleanup crew. And her advice to Americans when she visited uh, San Francisco a couple of years ago was, um, this is a quote, run, run as fast as you can. Don't believe the government. The government will lie to you. And you have to believe her because she wears the Chernobyl necklace. Those are the scars left behind from two surgeries to remove thyroid tumors. Over in Japan now, the government wants people to feel relieved that the radiation monitors are showing lowered levels of radiation. Somebody pointed out that the new systems that they've installed register radiation levels at 40% less than the previous monitors did. But they but they admit that they, I mean, this all came out, they admitted they lied about the levels, and they had kids dropping dead from heart failure from the radiation. They just covered it up. Yeah. Uh, it's it's part of the, the uh, scenario. You get it in all of these situations in all of these countries. Uh, one of the problems that I, I have identified, I'm calling the, reg the regulatory industrial complex. You have these organizations that we are told are supposed to be providing oversight and protection for the public, but instead they are acting too often as enablers. You have individuals with the NRC who, as inspectors in these plants, are finding some real problems and reporting them. But at the top level, you find the NRC is going out of its way to um, facilitate the operation of reactors that should have been closed down. And the Associated Press, they deserve the biggest reporting award in, in the world for uh, a survey that they did. They took a look at 11,000 NRC documents to see what the situation looked like from inside a nuclear reactor. Now, ordinarily, you don't get to see the photographs that the NRC put in this in these reports, rusted pipes, leaking water. This does not look like a, a sensible modern industrial plant. But the innards of these these uh, some some places you can't even get inside the the reactor components to see how how they're performing. They're they're just so difficult to reach. But this this is a summary that the AP came up with. Federal regulators have been working closely with the nuclear power industry to keep the nation's 18 reactors operating within safety standards. How? By repeatedly weakening those standards or simply fa failing to enforce them. A little more detail, quote, when valves leaked, the leakage was a lot more leakage was allowed, up to 20 times the original limit. When rampant cracking caused radioactive leaps, leaks from steam generator tubing, an easier test was devised so that the plants could meet the standards. It goes on and on. It's so frustrating, too, because I have three children, and I know, as Dr. Bob Bowman, who's a nuclear physicist, a former head of the Star Wars program, has said here, when things like Chernobyl or things like Fukushima happen, it just increases the cancer rate for the general public at large. But if you get a hot particle that was carried on dust or whatever, then you just get the lung cancer when you're 20. You know, people that get it today who are five years old and they just say, oh, you got lung cancer. And, and, and so if you get the, the it's like Russian roulette, as you call it, nuclear roulette with these hot particles. And and the thing is. The nuclear industry is getting worse and worse. And then we have all these cases, as you know, in Southern California and other places where they've had total meltdowns before, like the salt reactor. And then no one even knows about that today, even though it's declassified. They keep it secret when they melt down. We knew day one they weren't showing for three or four months any of the numbers out of the Fukushima area and, and out of that uh, province.
That's why it showed three times the radiation in Tokyo, a couple provinces, you know, south of there than they had there. And then now it came out. The head of Tokyo Electric apologized, leaders apologized. Yeah, we covered up the numbers. Yeah, we didn't want to panic. Meanwhile, it turned out three months after Fukushima, tuna hit the West Coast and the government tested the tuna. They knew it had very dangerous isotopes in it at high levels. And they said, you know what? We'll just raise the level it's safe. Let them eat the tuna. And again, as corrupt as our government's been in the past, they didn't used to act like this for my research. I mean, this is crazy. You've got things much bigger than Three Mile Island happening. What was it, in 59? They had a salt reactor blow up in Southern California. Radiated people, huge event. That wasn't known until the 90s. In fact, I'll pull up that article and show people. I'm ranting here, but Gar Smith is our guest. You were getting into, we went to break, the deception, the cover-ups, and where they're going. Am I wrong from my research and kind of a snapshot compared to your research and saying they're getting more reckless by the day? Or is, or is that just that I'm becoming more informed and they've always been reckless? <laughs> I, yeah, I think recklessness is, is built into the technology. Uh, there is no way on God's green earth that uh, a gener an engineering plan that uh, would create a nuclear reactor could be considered logically sustainable. Um, I was talking with uh, Marv Fertel, who is a nuclear industry representative, and he, he made the statement that nuclear ener energy was essential because we needed electricity. And I, I pointed out to him at a public meeting, and he nodded his head in agreement when I, I insisted that nuclear energy does not produce electricity. It produces only two things. The first is a lot of heat, and the second is a lot of radioactive garbage. There are a lot of things that produce heat. There are a lot of ways to generate steam, and it's the steam that generates the electricity through the turbine spinning. So we could have geothermal, wind, coal, natural gas, uh, hydroelectric, the list goes on and on. Yeah. And there is one irony. Uh, among all of our energy sector players, there's, there's only one industry that believes in global warming. It's not coal. It's not nuclear. It's not gas. It's the, I'm sorry, it, it is the nuclear industry because they argue new, global warming can be solved with nuclear energy because we don't produce CO2 gases. Well, uh, That's why plant. Mombiot has endorsed it. Yeah. I, no, it's, it's such a narrow focus because the, the carbon dioxide is produced when you build the plant, when you extract the ore, when you refine the product, when you create the fuel assemblies, when you do all of the shipping and then eventually the dismantling. The only time it doesn't uh, uh, produce CO2 is when it's busy producing huge amounts of unused heat and radioactive isotopes that are puffing away from the plants. But listen, you're, you're totally right on record that the plants are rotting, falling apart. The Associated Press admits that. My issue here is, I understand people think carbon dioxide goes up, it can make the sea levels rise. Let's just for the sake of argument say that's real, which I disagree with from the scientists we've interviewed. Still, reactors rotting and melting down everywhere is a lot bigger deal. Why don't environmentalists get upset about nuclear power instead of embracing it, because the big global warming advocates, George Mombiot, you know the list, they are just saying, I love it. In fact, his quote was, I believe in nuclear power more after Fukushima. I mean, what type of asinine statement is that? That's like Ann Coulter saying, the you know, radiation's good for you. The Japanese should thank the nuclear industry. Yeah, well, we, we do have uh, the, uh, the unholy triad of uh, George and Stuart Brand and uh, uh, Loveless who are supporting nuclear power, but that doesn't mean the majority of, uh, of environmentalists uh, have the same line. These are guys who have uh, prominent uh, uh, celebrity positions, which are not reflective of the- uh, So they're selling out. Okay, is nuclear the most dangerous thing in your opinion to the environment? Uh, uh, yeah, the most uh, dangerous man-made uh, technology that I think we've ever developed. Okay, and well, so if it's getting worse, I mean, where do you predict it's going to go now that they're going to even build more old design reactors and, and, and then keep the old ones going? Well, they're actually, produ uh, they, they want to keep the old ones going because it's a way of continuing to make money instead of facing up the fact that eventually they're supposed to tear these things down. 
Um, they do want to build new, re new design reactors uh, in the U.S., down in uh, Georgia and South Carolina. They want to build these uh, AP-1000s, and they're getting huge billion-dollar government loan guarantees to do it. But the construction isn't going too well, and the prospects are, are not too bright uh, that they'll ever be finished uh, or safely operated. And the basic design of these things was so problematic that uh, not even the NRC could get a unanimous vote out of five to uh, uh, um, have a unanimous approval of the design. The uh, former uh, chair of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission refused to vote for these new AP-1000 reactors because he said the uh, engineering plan had not taken in the lessons of uh, Fukushima. And getting back to Fukushima, we should bear in mind that those reactors that exploded in Japan were not Japanese reactors. They were U.S. Reactors made by General Electric. And the basic lesson there is when you have three reactors side by side that explode sequentially one after another, one, two, three, and the fourth, which got damaged, what that tells you is that that design, it's not designed just to produce a lot of heat. It was inadvertently designed, as we now see, to explode. We have 23 Fukushima-style reactors in the United States at 16 sites in 12 states. The NRC has put out a list of 27 U.S. reactors that are most at risk of uh, uh, a calamity in the event of a major uh, local earthquake. On that list of 27, five are Fukushima-style reactors. Um, there should be some concern, not only about uh, the threat from earthquakes, which we now know are much higher in the Midwest and the, uh, and the Southeast, where most of the historic large quakes have hit and where most of our reactors are located. And also, we should be paying attention to the warnings from NASA and the National Academy of Sciences that we are entering a maximum solar year. It's already begun. We are getting hit with solar flares that are going to increase in frequency and in in impact. And I want to expand on that briefly because that's what a lot of scientists have been on say is the biggest threat because it can blow out the power systems and you have more meltdowns as which has been proven but you know before with pre-nuclear events to, to, to the power system in Russia and other areas but what about all the insane ideas of now going to nuclear powered spacecraft and they're saying oh it's totally safe we want to start launching a rocket every month and nuclear powered satellites when all the research i've seen says that when those rockets fail which they do around 10 percent of the time it could end up blowing up in the atmosphere and then you've got a big problem it's already happened it's happened a couple of times uh, we had a russian reactor that uh, uh burned out of orbit and slammed into the andes we have uh, a u.s uh uh, system that crashed into the ocean with a uh, nuclear power plant. We've uh, uh, orbited uh, plutonium-powered spacecraft into deep space, but in order to reach deep space, somebody came up with the idea of using the Earth's gravitational pull as kind of like a, a bolo. A slingshot. To, uh, a slingshot, exactly. And that meant that we fired this, this uh, system with this plutonium core reactor out into space intending that it come back toward the Earth and that it clip the Earth's orbit and then circle the planet and zip back out even further into space. That's a great idea. But look at the risk. What if that had missed? What if there had been some kind of a terrible error that would have slammed into the planet? Well, look at all the space disasters. It's one of the most dangerous things. Mm -hmm. it has a huge margin of uh, disaster. Yeah, these, you know, when you're dealing with imponderables and, and uh, the likelihood of error, you really shouldn't be dealing on a level of uh, uh, nuclear potential. Gar, it, what's, it, Gar, Gar, why is it the mad scientists that get in charge? I guess they'll tell the government bureaucrats where they want. I, I'm sure you've seen, I talk about a lot about it, uh, uh, New Trinity, Trinity and Beyond, like 10 years ago or longer, narrated by, narrated, narrated by William Shatner. And in that... It, it shows what I'd read about, but it's the film footage of them detonating hundreds of high-powered hydrogen bombs in the upper atmosphere to, quote, see if they could damage the atmosphere. I, I mean, who are these people? Why are they doing this? Uh, I, I, I sometimes think of this as uh, uh, teenage science, you know, teenage boy science. Is, uh, what, 
why do you do it? Just to see if we can do it. You know, let's let's put this firecracker in this can or inside this watermelon and light it off and see what happens. Or inside this frog if you're George W. Bush. Oh, yeah, yeah he's, he's done that. And, I mean, these are the guys that came up with the idea to explode a nuclear bomb on the moon. Exactly. Uh, it, it's, 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 or they wanted to do crust tests to go drill down to the edge of the mantle and detonate one, but that got nixed. At least we're told it did. These are crazy people. Yeah. And these, these are just the stunts that we know about. God knows what they've been doing in the last month. <laughs> oh, man, and with harp and all the rest of it. Okay, so... We're almost out of time here. The book's available at InfoWarsStore.com and better bookstores everywhere. It's a bestseller. Nuclear uh, Roulette, I've read the book. It's absolute, I learned a lot from it, and believe me, I've probably done, let's not exaggerate, 100 interviews with top experts over the years on this subject and read a lot of books. I learned a lot, and I just see this as one of the biggest threats to my family. I think in closing, I interrupted your train of thought with the space-based stuff. Finishing up with the solar flare EMP danger. Well, yeah, this is something we know about. We've been warned. Uh, it could uh, knock us out for uh, four to ten years, according to NASA, uh, according to the National Academy of Sciences. We know what we can do. Uh, we need to protect the ultra-high uh, voltage uh, transformers in the United States. There's 350 of them. We can put in ground resistors. For uh, only $2 billion. Right. Let's, you know, for the Pentagon, that's chump change. And we could do that. There was a bill in, in the Senate called the SHIELD Act. we got to act on that. Bring it back. Um, that the problem's not going away. It's only going to get worse. It's only going to come sooner. So we got to act now. That's that's something that we need to do. We know earthquakes are going to pose a problem, but we definitely know that those solar flares uh, are are really something that we have to wake up to and deal with. For folks that don't know, it's happened a bunch in the U.S., but also in Europe since they put up telegraph wires and things. Uh, and they think it, it's uh, roughly a 100-year cycle. There's sub-cycles, but 100 years ago, all over the world, different times, generally, we, we've pulled up the dates on air before. You can look it up. When these solar flares hit right and all that ionizing different particles come in, it literally can melt wires across continents. And if that happens today, folks, we are in deep trouble. Yeah, we got hit with a solar flare in 89. It knocked out the power to 6 million Canadians, and it also uh, melted a transformer at the Salem One reactor in, in the U.S. And that was a small one. They've, I've had different uh, uh, astrophysicists on saying that routinely stuff 20, 30 times bigger hits. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what happens if a really big one hits? I mean, they say it could just be unbelievable. You hate to think about it. What but are the estimates on exactly from your research how bad it could be? Of What's the highest rate on one of those flares? That we could survive, I forget the name of it. Is it called an M1? What are they called? Yeah, I, I think there's a, a five level, a five tier level uh, for uh, flares. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. If sure, that's but correct. just from memory, I mean, I mean, the level we're talking about, some estimates are it could knock out every reactor in North America. Uh, well, yeah, in, implicitly, if you lose the power and if you don't have backup, if, if your diesel generators don't have uh, enough. Uh, juice to keep running until the power is restored, and if you're talking about power restoration that's going to be for, foreclosed for a period of months to, to years, all of those reactors are going to fail. They're going to melt down. They're going to run away. And believe me, you, as big a problem as, as decommissioning these reactors is now, the, the estimate is uh, it, it's going to cost half a, half a billion to a billion dollars to close down every reactor and 10 years to decommission and uh, isolate the, the wastes. In the case of Fukushima, they are estimating that it's going to take $137 billion and 30 years That's to right. deal with that problem. So and it still won't be completely mitigated. In closing, you know, my big issue here is look at Sandy. We're three weeks into this. Large areas still don't have power. And that is microscopic compared to a big solar flare. I mean, imagine, and then the diesel runs out, what, two, three weeks? And then the reactors melt down. Mm -hmm. And then you got the uh, spent fuel in these GE reactors on the rooftops. <laughs> if you were building a home, is that where you'd put your uh, garbage can? Well, plus, the, what, that MOX reactor even had plutonium in it that blew up. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the, the uh, third reactor. Uh, they were using a mix of uh, military-grade uh, uranium uh, uh, byproduct.
This is, uh, I mean, it's, it's returning the favor because initially uh, reactors, the government gave uh, the power plant operators uranium and in exchange they got plutonium that they turned into uh, uh, buttons for nuclear uh, triggers. Uh, and now, uh, thanks to uh, uh, happily, you know, the, the dismantling of some of the nuclear throw weight in, in the Russian missiles, we're, we're burning Russian uh, uh, uranium uh, product in our nuclear power plants. That's the MOX, the mixed uh, uranium oxide. Uh. And as that nuclear expert said from Russia, run as fast as you can. Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, we can shut this down if we try. And the environmentalists are just going to have to sit there and be scared of the carbon dioxide plants breathe. We're going to, again, even if you think coal's deadly, folks, I'd say coal over nuclear any day. Nuclear roulette, the truth about the most dangerous energy source on Earth. Uh, Gar Smith, shut down the plants now and start prosecuting the people that have cut back the safety uh, standards because they are endangering us all. Gar, thank you for the time. Thank you.